Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and you may have seen the video that I did about installing the new MagnaRide shocks in the front of the Yukon, um, but I do want to talk about some trouble I had. I actually had to reinstall the factory one for the video uh, because the new ones didn't work, so I wanted to kind of talk about it and just show you these kind of side by side and what did not work with them and um, let you know where I'm at with the whole process. So the factory ones, this is what it looks like. It's by BWI. And uh, there's the part number for you. And it's really hard to find these as the full unit. You can only find the, the shock absorber itself. And so there is an aftermarket company here, and they offer the fully assembled shock absorber, which is what I was looking for. And uh, they were not cheap. They were $699, and then with tax, uh, they were about $749. And so when they came in, they looked really good. I was pretty uh, happy with their overall you know, look and quality. They look pretty good. They look just like the factory. In fact, the logo even looks like the factory, only it says EBJ here at the bottom, but the same color, the orange and the and the yellow down there. So they make it look like it's the factory replacement. And it even had the plug, which you didn't have to wire up or anything. So I was pretty excited about that. It looked like it would just plug right in like the old ones uh, would unplug. Uh, but I did have a lot of trouble when it came time to installing them. Also, I mean, not as big of a deal, but the boxes that they came in had all kinds of strange uh, things saying exhaust manifold. The wiring, as I read through this, uh, kind of got me a little nervous because it talks about having to rewire it if it doesn't work and if you get the traction lights on and suspension lights on. So anyway, they came with these nice protective cups over the connector, and so they looked pretty good, and uh, it comes with its own hardware and everything, so I was pretty optimistic about getting them all installed. So I removed the old strut and got it out of the way, and that process was not really too bad. Um, and when I put them side by side, they also still looked you know, like they were pretty similar. So unfortunately, with them looking so similar, you can't tell a difference until they're actually right next to each other. And so looking towards the top, they looked pretty good. They both had three studs in the top that looked like they would be evenly spaced with the connector plug. The boot looked a little bit different, and the rest of it looked like it was the same. But when you actually line them up, you can see the one on the right, the new EBJ one, was one inch longer. Also, when it's straight, you need, you can see where I've drawn the lines here in this picture, you need that stud to be perfectly straight with the bottom of the strut, and this one was off. So when I went to install it, I mainly had the trouble with those three studs at the top. There's a little bit of wiggle room when you put them up in here. They can go side to side just slightly, but I could not get the feet to line up straight, as you can see here, so it was off. And there's no way that I was going to get it to match up and I tried moving it, and uh, you know it just wasn't going to line up straight. So um, I was very disappointed with that, and also with it being another inch or so um, longer, that actually makes a big difference. I tried compressing a little bit, see if that would help. Nothing would work, and uh, I mean I got the bolts lined up the best that I could, put a nut on the top of them to kind of hold it in place, but unless I was going to take off the uh, sway bar entirely or do something drastic to drop that control arm down, it just was not going to fit back up onto the control arm. And I didn't want to be at the point where I was having to modify a new part uh, and make it non-returnable or, you know, make it not work right or have the right height of my car be off or, you know, so anyway, in the end, I put the old one right back in and it fit perfectly, of course, and you know how it came out and how it should just being you know, an inch shorter or the factory length that it should be and it went right onto the control arm how it should. So at this point, I returned the other one and uh, Amazon was really good about the return process. It was very easy and uh, I'm still just kind of waiting for them to uh, refund the money onto the card. It shipped, which was another thing. It took me, you know, 45 minutes waiting in line around the holiday season at the UPS store to ship the package again. I wanted to make sure I got a tracking, you know, receipt for it so that there was no problems with this being, you know, $750. And then when it does get back, they're going to take $25 off of my refund. And so I am going to have to pay for shipping. So anyway, that was my experience with it. Um, and so put in the comments what you think. Maybe I could have made the other ones fit, but I really don't think for the price I paid that that was my option I was looking for, I wasn't trying to modify something or, or make it right. 
So that's uh, where I went with it. I don't think I'll buy from that brand. Um, I'll look for some factory ones if I can find them at all with the, you know, already installed. Because it, you have to take a, a spring compressor and have some special tools to realign everything. But uh, uh, that's why I just wanted it as a fully assem fully assembled unit just to drop in. But anyway, thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll see you in the next video.